Okay, welcome to those of you who are joining us. Um, welcome to this first round of Vocabularizing with Anne. I'm going to hand you over to our host for the evening, uh, game creator extraordinaire, transcriber extraordinaire, Jane Kendall, who will take you through some of the things that we're going to be doing this evening. Well, hello, dear friends, and welcome. It's time to play Vocabularizing with Anne, the Anne Lister's dictionary game that pits your vocabulary skills against Anne Lister's. I'm Jane, your MC, and I'll be propped up, thank goodness, by my lovely assistant, Alex, of the fabulous Summit Squad. She'll be behind the scenes running the show. And Alex and I are delighted that you could join us, and we hope you'll have a great time playing our game. Here's how it works. Uh, yeah, we go. Here's how it works. I'll give you a word used by Ann Lister somewhere in her journals, travel journals, or letters. We'll show you four possible meanings for the word, each with an example, real or made up, of how Ann used or didn't really use the word. You'll try to figure out the correct meaning of the word as Ann used it, and you'll get points if you choose the right one. If you're our big winner, you'll soon be the owner of your very own Summit Carabiner. That's how it works. And Alex will now explain how you can play. Okay, so for tonight's game, we are using something called Mentimeter. Um, it doesn't matter if you've never used it before, you don't have to install anything, um, and it's really easy to play. So you can either open a new browser window if you're using a laptop to, uh, to watch this Zoom. So you can either open a new browser window on whatever device you're using, um, and then you go to menti.com um, and enter the code that is on the screen now. Or alternatively, if you have your mobile handy, if you have an iPad handy, um, or even a second laptop handy, um, fire that up, go to menti.com, input that code, um, and you'll join the game. If you're using a mobile device, you can use your uh, QR code reader to scan the code on the screen. That'll automatically take you to the game. Um, or you can um, go to menti.com and put it in manually. Once you're in the game, you'll see this holding screen. And as we introduce our slides, um, you can either watch the presentation on Zoom, you'll see the same thing on Zoom as you'll see elsewhere, or you can actually uh, listen to Jane and follow along on your second device. When the time comes to vote on some of the questions that we have for you, you will have to vote um, on your second device. So the device that you've gone to menti.com, that is how you vote um, and that is how you score. And um, if this seems way too confusing, don't worry, you can still play without doing that. We just won't get to see how amazing your knowledge is. And I can see we've just got some people who are still joining us. So I'm going to run through that one more time just because we want as many people as possible to play. So you either need to open another browser window on whatever device you're currently watching Zoom on. And on that one, you go to menti.com and input the eight digit code on the screen. Or use a second device like your mobile phone. It works really well on that. Um, go to menti.com and put in that same code and you'll be able to play. Um, you'll notice on the bottom of the screen, there is a heart button. And I can see that some of you have already found that and are using it to send Jean and I love. Um, send us love throughout. We like love. Um, and um, I'm hoping that most people are in now and uh, we're going to head on into the game. Um, but obviously, if you haven't been able to join us yet, if you're having technical problems, we will be playing this again tomorrow and on Sunday. So you do have other chances. So just roll with it for now um, and enjoy uh, what Jane has prepared for us. All righty then. Are you ready? Because here we go. The first word is poltroon, P-O-L-T-R-O-O-N. Which of the following is its meaning? Is it A, a member of any of several cavalry regiments in the British Army, as referred to by Anne in her journal entry of Saturday, November 7th, 1818? Read aloud to Ellen, the first 54 pages of Travels in Canada and the United States in 1816 and 1817 by Lieutenant Francis Hall of the 14th Light Poltroons? Or is it B, a person of low intelligence 
as referred to by Anne and speaking of Little Dehagaman in this journal entry of Sunday, March 28th, 1830. Somehow I like him less well than at first and begin to think Mama is right. The boy is not quick or clever, but perhaps rather a poltroon, though he has more geographical knowledge than most boys of his age. As to languages, perhaps he does not speak well any of the four he knows, Danish, German, English, and French. Or is it C, an abject, contemptible, spiritless coward, as referred to by Anne in this journal entry of Saturday, April 14th, 1827. He stared at me and I at him. He had heard at Madame Du Bois, I was in love with Mrs. Barlow. He wanted, said Mrs. Barlow, to see what sort of a bosom and being I had. I called him a poltroon to Mrs. B and seemed vexed. Or is it D, baggy trousers or ladies drawers worn in the 19th century as referred to by Anne in this journal entry of Friday, May 8th, 1829. Mrs. Barlow was well enough inclined. I just touched her through her gown in front and tried to get up her petticoats, but could not make my way through her poltroons and should at once without a word have given it up. But she, without more ado, undid herself and made way for me. So which of these four do you think is the real meaning of poltroon? Take a moment and get ready to make your choice. And remember, the faster you answer, the more points you can get. Okay, so at this point, if you're playing, you will have been assigned one of these lovely icons, some of them more random than others. Um, I don't know who's got the train. Um, and you have an option to put in your name. So you can put in either your real name, your full name, your nickname, or indeed any name that you wish within reason. Um, and that's what will appear on the leaderboard. So other people will be able to see that. Just bear that in mind. Um, and when I press enter now, um, you're going to see a five second countdown. And then you're going to have to see those four options again and pick your choice. Remember, correct answers get you points, but even faster correct answers get you more points. Um, so I'm going to start the countdown now, look at your second device, and off we go. If you haven't yet voted, you have 20 seconds remaining. Oh, wow. Uh, impressive, impressive results. Looks like almost everybody, uh, or at least a bunch of people, know this word. Ann Lister would be so proud. Did you get it right? The answer is poltroon, C, an abject, contemptible, spiritless coward. The words defined in the other choices are shown here in brackets. So that cavalry soldier is a dragoon, the person of low intelligence, a moron, and the baggy trousers, pantaloons. I have a little rhyme. It's called Advice for a Dragoon. Here's how it goes. If you're in the dragoons, don't wear pantaloons and don't be a moron or a spineless poltroon. And now let's check the leaderboard and see who's ahead. Alex, I'll need you to help me out with that. I can't quite read the yeah, results. So we, we have quite a lot of people with the right answer, but the person who scored the highest is 978 points is Puffy. I don't know who Puffy is, but um, Puffy is a puffer fish by the look of it. Um, well done, Puffy. However, at this stage, it is all to play for um, because we do have another three questions. Uh, but it's looking tight at the top. If you haven't scored at all, you definitely have a chance uh, still of taking the game. Now, thank you, Alex. If you don't mind, we'll continue on that way because I really can't see quite see the, the graph. Uh, and on to word two, which is crassulent, C-R-A-S-S, -S, 
U-L-E-N-T. Which of the following is its meaning? Is it A, lacking sensitivity, refinement, or intelligence, vulgar, as used by Ann in this journal entry of Sunday, February 13th, 1833. Mrs. Sutherland, crassulent and vulgar, which would have been sooner and more easily perceived had she been less quiet. She had dirty nails. Or is it B, in botany, fleshy, thick, or fat, as used by Anne in her journal entry of Saturday, June 30th, 1838. The garden's small, but very nicely kept and arranged. Asked for and brought away branches of the murier with large, thick, crassulent leaves, fruit black and large. Or is it C, uncomfortable due to an excessive amount of gas in the bowels, as used by Anne in this journal entry made in Hastings on Monday, December 19th, 1831. Thinking of Veer far too much last night and this morning, in tears then and almost now, headachy, crassulent and bilious and not feeling well this morning, feverish, no wonder. Or is it D, toxic and lethal, as used by Anne in this journal entry of Saturday, July 11th, 1829 in Paris, I asked the somnambule if she had cured any English. Yes, some from London. She said her Londoner had been dying of a crassulent infected putrid fever and she had just cured him, but he was still very weak. So what do you think crassulent really means? Get ready to make your choice now as quickly as you can. Okay, so again, I'm going to start the timer and you have five, um, you, it'll have five seconds and then you'll have 20 seconds to vote. So fastest answer, correct answer wins. Again, what a learned group, because I, I'm impressed. I didn't know the word crassulent before, but this crowd is, you know, you guys are holding your own against Ann Lister's vocabulary. Uh, but did you get it right? And the correct answer was crassulent B, in botany, fleshy, thick, or fat. Choice A, lacking sensitivity, is crass. Choice C, gassy, is flatulent. And choice D, toxic or lethal, is virulent. I have a little rhyme for these words. It's called, what Ann Lister would call you. And here's how it goes. She wouldn't call you crassulent if your flatulence is virulent. Since you're lacking in class, instead she'd call you crass. Time to check the leaderboard. Okay, so it looks like Puffy is definitely holding their own. Um, but I see that Jessica Payne is uh, it's climbing up that leaderboard. Um, and we also have Charlotte. Although I will say you can see there's really only a handful of points in it at the minute. So um, definitely still all to play for in this competition for a coveted Summit Carabiner key ring. Yep, still half the game to go and anyone can win. So let's move on to that next word, which is cacking. I understand the Brits have a uh, advantage in this one. Uh, C-A-C-K-I-N-G, which of the following is its meaning? Is it A, a sharp rapping noise as referred to by Anne in her journal entry of Saturday, September 19th, 1835 at Shibden. Much rain in the night, got up and went downstairs over the house at one to see what made the cacking I heard, a rat fet in the beer cellar probably thence originated the noise. Or is it B, coughing, rasping, barking, or wheezing, as used by Anne in her journal entry of Tuesday, July 12th, 1831. Letter, three pages from my aunt, Shibden, to say my father was still complaining of weakness, though evidently stronger, and his cacking far less troublesome. Or is it C, defecating, 
as used by Anne in her journal entry of Sunday, November 14th, 1830. In about half hour from Charant, on seeing a little girl cacking, said to myself, well, it is very ugly. Or is it D, something that forms, protects, supports, or strengthens from behind, as referred to by Anne in her journal entry of Monday, September 21st, 1835. Out one half hour in the new farmyard and about, with Booth explaining about the cacking for Adney Bridge, etc. And which of the four do you think is the real meaning of cacking? It's time to make your choice. Okay, get ready, the countdown begins. Oh, my word. Fantastic. I, 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 I'm speechless. You, you guys are getting so many of them right. It's, it's blowing my mind. I don't want to tell you. I, it, you know, Alex shared with me that people in England know what cacking is. Little kids know that word. I had never heard it before. So I don't know how many Americans we have on the call. But if you guys got that result, way to go. Anyway, the company I keep than anything. <laughs> uh, the, the right answer was C, defecating. The rapping noise, of course, is knocking. The coughing is hacking. And support from behind is backing. As it happens, I have a little rhyme for this. It's called, How to Know If Your Cacking is Normal. And here's how it goes. Cacking, even without backing, should not produce knocking or hacking. If it does, something is lacking. And what does our leaderboard say now? I can see that Puffy is indeed very fast, but we have a lot of fast figures on buzzers in this session. So Puffy is still ahead with nine points. If Puffy gets the next question wrong, though, Puffy could fall. So no pressure, Puffy. Um, and we have quite a lot of other people right up there at the top. Um, I don't, I can't see if anyone hasn't scored at all, but um, if you haven't scored at all, don't worry, because there is a logic to James games that once you play them for a while, because I've been building them, it does start to make sense. So even if you're not doing well tonight, by Sunday, you may well be a pro. Well, the, the answers do have to be amenable to me creating a poem about it. So, you know, there's a hint. Uh, anyway, uh, on to our one last word for this round, which is apparent. A-P-E-R-I-E-N-T. Which of the following is its meaning? Is it A, a laxative, as referred to by Anne in her journal entry of Monday, August 6th, 1821, while in Newcastle visiting the Belcombs? Steph gave me three prescriptions for venereal leprosy and common aperient pills. Or is it B, an alcoholic drink, especially a wine, drunk before a meal to whet the appetite, as referred to by Anne in her journal entry of Friday, January 24th, 1840 in Russia. Off to Princess, Princess Cherkaski's at eight and a half. Very agreeable evening. A very good, handsome, abundant supper, starting with a light white wine aperient and curd pâtés to eat with it. Or is it C, readily seen or understood, evident or obvious, as used by Anne in her travel journal entry of Thursday, October 14th, 1830, while traveling with Lady Stewart in the south of France. Found Lady Caroline Paulette at the breakfast table with Lady Stewart. She spoke very kindly, but did not introduce me. So I sat down, took no apparent notice, but sat down and ate away at my breakfast. Or is it D? a native of a Mesopotamian kingdom and empire of the ancient Near East, as referred to by Anne in her journal entry of Thursday, February 15th, 1821. Stayed some time looking over volume 19, quarterly review article on apparent antiquities, 
with an account of the early life of Bebzoni, who is six feet seven inches and of strength and proportion. So what do we think is the true definition of a parient? Get ready to enter your choice now. Okay, the countdown begins. Hi. And once again, the vast majority know what a parent means. So impressive. Did you get it right? An apparent is A, a laxative, the drink to whet your appetite, an aperitif. Something obvious is apparent. And those ancient Mesopotamians were Assyrians. I have a little rhyme for these words. It's called something obvious. And here's how it goes. It was amply apparent, even to the Assyrians, that good aperitifs should not be apparients. And now let's check the leaderboard one last time and see who turns out to be our big winner for round one. Looks to me like Puffy has been dominant throughout and Puffy is our winner. And Puffy, you will soon be receiving your very own Summit Carabiner as a lasting memento of your victory and all hail Puffy the champion. And that wraps up round one of Vocabularizing with Anne. Now that you're warmed up, we hope you'll join us tomorrow for round two when another fabulous Summit Carabiner will be up for grabs and anyone can win it. Thank you. Well done, Puffy. Um, email anne.lister.research at gmail.com with your postal address and we will happily put a summit in the post to you as soon as we can. Um, so yeah, thanks a lot for playing everyone. I'm gonna stop sharing now and we will revert to normal water closet behavior, <laughs> as in chatting. <laughs>